Kenneth Moten with ABC News here live in Washington where the March for Our Lives is just 45 minutes away from starting. We are seeing a stream of people who are walking toward Pennsylvania Avenue now where that is the epicenter around 3rd, 4th in Pennsylvania um, where people will be lined up for at least nine blocks, almost reaching the White House. We're told where hundreds of thousands of people are expected in the nation's capital today. You see the capital right there behind me where people are really hoping that the Folks who work inside that building on Capitol Hill will hear them and really move on some tougher gun control laws and making schools safer. People are walking out of Union Station right now, and they have been. It's been, guys, for hours now at this point. Since early this morning, we've seen people who have been coming off trains, off buses, uh, off uh, the city's metro and they've been making their way to get their spots on Pennsylvania Avenue because they want to be close to the main stage, which stretches all the way across Pennsylvania Avenue to get those speakers, those performers, a number of celebrities from Jennifer Hudson um, to uh, Ariana Grande, who are going to be performing on that stage um, because there was a bit, big benefit concert last night, and there are a lot of speakers and performers today as well. You see these folks that are behind me? Hey guys, Kenneth Moten with ABC. Can we stop you for just a second to ask you, why was it important for you guys to be here today? Um, because it's really just gotten to a point where people aren't able to feel safe in a place that they really should in their school. Um, and we're here to show that, you know, no matter who you are, no matter where you live, no matter what you come from or what you believe in, you should really have a right to be safe in a place where you're trying to get an education. You guys are students, I assume. Yes. Um, where do you guys attend school? Where are you from? Um, I'm from Maryland, and I go to a community college in Maryland. You go to a community college, mm -hmm. and you? Um, I'm from Queens, and I go to a SUNY. And I go to New York University. So at some point, you guys are in college, but at some point you were in high school. Could you imagine, obviously, high school students having to feel that having to look for exits, having to feel like they, they are not safe in their school. No, I mean, that's absolutely horrendous. And I think that's why, you know, coming here, like you're saying, is so important, because this is one of the ways we can have a voice in this. Uh, and the fact that those kids were completely alone, and there are so many kids across the country that are completely alone when this happens, and it's, you know, they need a voice to stand up for them. And obviously our government isn't doing enough, so it's up to us, and we have to do it. There are so many people in this country who believe that the people who are out here today, they're here because they're anti-gun, they're anti-Second Amendment. Are you anti-Second Amendment? Um, I come from a family that does believe in the Second Amendment, but personally, I have never found an interest in it. It's just been something that, to me, has always been scary, and I won't ever understand why people think that having guns just to own them will be something that is like a hobby and something that it's it's scary to think that somebody just owns these deadly weapons let me ask you do you see the other side of the debate um i think that the constitution does state that we have a right to bear arms but i also think that it states that we have a right to life and we have a right to pursue happiness and that we have a right to liberty and without regulation of dangerous weapons like this with them in the hands of criminals, with them in the hands of people who are bigoted with hate in their hearts. There's no way that people can pursue those other rights that I think are put above that. As a young person in a school, do you think President Trump's actions on bump stocks, for instance, yesterday, will it make an impact? I don't think it's enough. And I think we've really gotten to a state in this country where we all need to come together and really say that we need to put an end to this and put even harsher regulations on what are currently being put in place. Okay. Thank you, guys. I really appreciate it. Thanks for taking the time to chat with us. Yes, folks who, young folks from, obviously, from high school up to college who wanted to be here. This is a student-led effort, a student-led effort really globally across the world where hundreds of marches are planned in major cities in New York, Los Angeles, London, Paris, where they are gathered and organized together without the help of adults, really, and they have planned something monumental like this and really what they're calling a movement as folks you know leave these transportation centers uh, and make their way over to Pennsylvania Avenue where they will line the street and really make their voices heard because again they want something done but as I mentioned in my questioning there there is an other side to this debate and many point to the fact that the NRA is the leader of that other side of the debate and so you see some scientists that say you know pretty much anti NRA uh, that guns are not needed, or certain types of guns are not needed, especially assault rifles. I was actually just looking at some of the signs that were coming. If you look across some of the people who were actually walking across, see that melt the guns. Uh, some would say that's pretty anti-gun. 
Uh, but there are a lot of folks who are out here today who say they are not anti-gun and that they are for the Second Amendment. Um, but you're going to get a different opinions and views that are out here when you see these folks, when you see the sea of humanity that we have seen out here, people from different backgrounds, generations of folks and families who have come. Hey, folks, how you doing? Kenneth Bone with ABC. Can I actually chat with you just for a second? I see you guys are going to the march. Yes. You've got your signs. Yes. You, I, I, you know, I was talking to someone earlier when we talked about your position on guns. You say melt the guns. Right. Well, this is the slogan from a song that um, from about 30 years ago, and it's just basically saying that we need to get rid of guns. I don't think we'll get rid of all the guns, but it's a start. So we're just hoping for better gun control laws. We also want better background checks um, and the ban of assault guns. If we could just melt the assault guns, that would be great. But there are people who say, and you say assault weapons are... are when you talk about guns in general, mm -hmm. there are folks who say we need the firepower. We need more power, not less. We don't need more firepower. We, we, if you want to go hunting with a gun, if you want a handgun to maybe protect your home, that's fine, but we don't need assault rifles. We don't need guns that can kill that, hundreds of people and run around. That's ridiculous. Thank you. Where are you coming from? I'm from Norfolk, Virginia, and I'm actually an elementary school teacher, and I have, for the last 20 years, three or four times a year taking kindergarten and first graders into closets to hide and I'm over that. I don't want to do that anymore. I won't keep you up for much longer because I know you want to get down there and get your spot. Your yes. name? My name is Kathy Gordon. Kathy, you're a school teacher. Mm -hmm. Do you want to be armed? No, I do not want to be armed. Definitely do not want to be armed. It wouldn't be impossible to have teachers carry guns. It would just result into um, unwanted disasters. It just would not work for teachers. They can't be armed. We don't want to, I don't want to be responsible for shooting somebody or making a mistake and shooting the wrong person. We that's not what I went to be to school to be a teacher. I want to teach kids. I don't want to be armed. I'm a librarian, so arm me with my books. <laughs> have the men and women inside that building just behind us here, have they done enough to make the school safer? No, of course not. They haven't done nearly enough. And I also would like to just say it's not just the school issue. There are many mass shootings in this country that have nothing to do with schools. I mean, Orlando, Las Vegas, Charleston. Those, those were not schools. Those were churches. Those were clubs. Those were outdoor events. It is, the, it is not just a school issue, and I think that needs to be addressed, too. And that's why arming school teachers or putting in an armed guard at the school doesn't doesn't change any of that, you know. I mean, you should be able to go into your church and pray with your church group and not worry about a 19-year-old kid who's gotten a gun who didn't get a back, full background check. And same with going into a nightclub or going to a concert. And the nightclubs, they have armed, um, they had an armed guard there and he was shot. So that's not the answer. That's why we need to really think about banning guns, making stricter gun control, um, background checks. I, you know, we have a license to drive. You should have a license to carry a gun. That's how I feel about it. Thank you, Ms. Kathy. I appreciate it. And thank you for your service in, okay. in the education field as well. well. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. So, yes, so she's going to take her place. She's got her sign, and she's got her group right there, and they're going to head down and find their spots. We're seeing a lot of folks like that who are coming from all over from Virginia, obviously a close place, but from several states all over to make their way to the nation's capital for this. You see some more young folks and families who are coming right now uh, to uh, march for our lives. And as they have those stickers that say fight for our lives here, so educators, young people, parents as well, all coming out of Union Station to make their way over. Now, we want to talk about uh, all those other people. And you know what? We've got a whole team here with ABC News. Becky was just trying to tell me something. She's being shy right now. I'm just going to read what she wants me to say off her phone here. You know what? Yes, she was making some points that are very important to highlight here, that there is a large organization here that is happening here. And not only are we seeing people who are saying, hey, we need to pass tougher gun control laws, but we also need to vote. So we see people who are stationed around this march in this area, even outside Union Station right here, who are, I think, come walk with me here, here. Yep, you see this sign right here? This is somebody, hey, how you doing? Kenneth with ABC News. He was saying register to vote now, and it's got the March for Our Lives logo. Can I talk to you for a second? Yeah. What's your name? Alexia. So, Alexa, you think obviously it's important not only to say, hey, we think about this mission for March for Our Lives, yeah. but get out and vote as well. Yeah, of course. Um, I mean, the one way we can have our voice really be heard is through voting. And I think, I truly think that every 
voice and every vote um, is important and if you want to have legislation that supports your beliefs and the beliefs of you know the majority of us then go out and vote and if you're not registered then come here and register anyone with a green shirt can register you and are you saying register to vote to get people who are going to enact tougher you know gun control laws are you just saying get out and vote and get, and be represented be represented of course um I mean, it's a democracy, so every voice is unique to the person, and so every voice deserves to be listened to and is equal, so. So you see, thank you again for speaking with us. So yeah, you see folks like there who are trying to mobilize, organize, and motivate people to make sure their voices are heard. Obviously, this is a big political statement that's being made out here when you have groups of, you know, hundreds of thousands of people who are coming out here with pretty much the same ideal and goal of enacting tougher gun control laws, but you've got folks who are just trying to make sure that people exercise uh, their rights, get that civic engagement going as well. So we're still seeing those steady stream of folks. We're going to get walking soon, so stick with us here on ABC News because we've got you covered for this March for Our Lives. It's Kenneth Moten reporting from Washington. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.